Because these vapours are of different densities, some rise more than others within the tower. As they cool, they revert to liquid, which is collected in a series of trays at various heights. From near the base of the tower, the heavier oils used in lubrication are removed, whilst higher up, lighter oils such as diesel oil are obtained, and near the top of the tower, high-grade petrol. There are, of course, many other fuels and petroleum-based products obtained from trays between those shown. Neither petrol nor diesel fuel enters the working cylinders of an engine in a normal liquid state. In the case of the petrol engine, fuel is reduced into fine droplets by a carburetor, which also mixes the fuel with air before it's burned in the engine cylinders. This is a diagram of the electrical ignition system which provides the spark to ignite the fuel-air mixture in the petrol engine. In a four-stroke engine with the inlet valve open and the exhaust valve closed, the first stroke of the piston draws the fuel-air mixture into the cylinder. This is the induction stroke. The inlet valve then closes, the piston rises and compresses the mixture. The mixture is then ignited by a spark jumping across the electrodes of the spark plug. The burning gases expand and force the piston down. This is the power stroke. At this point the exhaust valve opens, the piston rises and the burnt gases are expelled. This is the complete four-stroke cycle. Induction, compression, power, exhaust. The diesel engine looks very much like the petrol engine, but in several important respects it's quite different. The diesel does not require a carburetor. The electrical ignition system and the spark plug are also unnecessary. However, the diesel does require fuel injection equipment. This consists of a supply pump, a fuel filter and an injection pump which feeds fuel to the engine cylinders through the injector. There's one other significant difference. The diesel engine has a much higher compression ratio. In fact, the volume between the crown of the piston and the cylinder head at the top dead centre is usually less than half that of the petrol engine. In a diesel engine, when the piston moves down on the induction stroke, it draws in not a fuel mixture, but filtered air. On the compression stroke, this air is squeezed into the small space at the top of the cylinder and is compressed to something like one twentieth of its original volume. As the air becomes compressed, so its temperature rises. This can be demonstrated when a flat tyre needs pumping up. It's not just the boy who gets hot. The pump and connections also become heated as the air drawn into the pump cylinder is compressed and forced through the connection into the tyre. A more striking example is a pneumatic match, which consists of a tight-fitting piston, a tube, and some tinder, which is placed on the end of the piston. Air is compressed on ramming the piston into the tube. Sufficient heat is generated to cause the tinder to smolder, which, with gentle persuasion, bursts into flame. The fact that air becomes heated on compression is used as the basis for the diesel principle. The temperature of the air within the cylinder reaches at least 500 degrees centigrade. It's at this point that the fuel is injected as a fine spray or mist. It then ignites without requiring a spark and the expanding gases force the piston down on the power stroke. As the piston rises, the burnt gases are expelled. 
The full cycle once more. Induction, drawing in just air. Compression, causing the air to reach a high temperature. At this point, the fuel is injected. The power stroke, as the burning gases expand. And finally, exhaust. When cylinders are joined together to form a multi-cylinder unit, the power is also multiplied. In this way, engines can be made to suit a wide variety of power applications. The diesel's ability to maintain its power as the load increases makes it the universal choice for construction machinery. A different kind of performance is needed for road vehicles where speed and loads vary continuously throughout the work period. Whether in long distance haulage or door to door deliveries, diesel engines provide the most economic source of power. But it's in food production that the diesel has made a great contribution. Harvesting, for instance, requires constant power with great reliability to gather in the shortest space of time the fruits of a year's work on the land. Throughout the world, diesel engines provide reliable and economic power.